so welcome everyone. Um, so do, welcome to the uh, Europrax webinar on flexible electronics. Uh, so two weeks ago, you could um, well uh, dive into the flexible electronics world and get the introduction from my colleague Chris Mini. Today we have scheduled the second webinar in this series on uh, from Pragmatic, so from Dr. Vincent Barlier. And uh, Vincent will dive a bit deeper in uh, the technology at Pragmatic, so the Flex IC technology. And before I hand over to Vincent, I would first like to explain some house rules. Uh, so as you have seen or probably noticed, your mic and camera has been disabled. Um, also, the chat has been disabled, but I will turn that back on uh, at the moment that Vincent has concluded his presentation and when I open the floor for Q&A. So then the rule will be that if you have a question, you can just raise your hand and then you can also use your microphone. Once I have said, well, you can ask your question. Uh, you can choose whether you do your question by the chat or if you prefer to do it through the microphone. So that are the house rules. So having that set, I would like to introduce and welcome Vincent. So Vincent Barlier is currently commercial manager as Pragmatic Printing and he's accountable or responsible for the development of Pragmatic IC Foundry business. He has over 10 years experience in the semiconductor world and was pre previously uh, related to Flex Enable, responsible for uh, business development of flexible display technologies. Previously, he also held uh, technical positions as a researcher at Plastic Logic and the University of Southern California, working in the field of plastic electronics. He is the author of 12 scientific publications and several conference papers. Vincent holds a PhD degrees in, uh, degree in material science from the University of Lyon in France, and he's a certified uh, professional project manager of the uh, PMI, the Project Management Institute, like me. So we have two P PMPs in, in the room, Vincent. So having that said, Vincent, I hand it over to you, and I uh, hope you all enjoy the webinar. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Romano, for uh, the introduction. Yeah, I'm the commercial manager of Foundry for Pragmatic. I'm very happy to be here in this Euro Practice webinar to introduce Pragmatic Foundry services. I hope by the end of the talk, you will have um, a good understanding of our technology uniqueness. We really want to inspire you to create more device architectures on our technology platform. And please, if you have any questions during the talk, as Romano say, you can write them down and we can get back to it at the end of the session. Pragmatic, we are a British semiconductor company founded in 2010. Uh, we are now more than uh, 100 people and we are growing rapidly. We have two sites. Uh, R&D site is in Cambridge. Uh, I'm located in Cambridge and we have also a manufacturing site which is in Sedgefield in the north of England. We have several shareholders, uh, one being ARM, so this is a renowned semiconductor IP company, and the other, Every Denison, uh, the global, uh, global RFID inlay manufacturer. Uh, we have a range of RFID chip products, uh, which uh, usually we make available for inlay manufacturer, but we also provide some sort of custom chip design on manufacturing services, and that's the topic uh, that we will discuss today. So we make flexible integrated circuit known as flex ICs and have uh, unique attributes. So one of them being that they are silicon free. Uh, that gives them uh, a main advantage of being very low cost when you combine them with our uh, high volume manufacturing process. Uh, they are also very thin, flexible, shock and heat resistant. And our purpose is very much to add intelligence to everyday object uh, where the end product costs are too low to afford any conventional silicon chip solution. So what we want to do is to rethink uh, semiconductor manufacturing. So if you think about uh, uh, manufacturing on silicon ASIC today, the NRE cost is very high for dedicated production masset. It's also too expensive in volume for many applications as well. Uh, if you think about uh, the Internet of Everything, for instance, if we want to add intelligence to everyday object, then it has to be at lower uh, 
price points, uh, price point as possible. There is always an intent to minimize the chip size design, so you can always try to reduce the cost on silicon, but it's not always possible for devices uh, like sensor, for instance, or devices that are uh, that have uh, like a large analog part of large IOs. So it's it's not always possible to make a chip smaller on silicon. So in volume or wafer are also priced significantly lower than silicon uh, and even compared to fully depreciated fab. Uh, it's hard to get into detail about the, the cost of our product, but as an example, we know we have a, a standard NFC product and compared to other NFC products on, on conventional technology on the market, we are today on 90% lower cost in volume. So the second point I wanted to address, uh, it's uh, the global production shortage. So we know this uh, overall uh, it, it happens today and it put uh, many companies at risk. Uh, some uh, industries such as automotive have already experienced hundreds of billions of loss in revenue uh, uh, this year. And that global shortage, it, it's also the IoT industry. In fact, if you think about the two largest RFID chip manufacturers, they have increased their, their lead time to from 20 to 20 weeks, where it was before six to eight weeks. We offer a much more rapid development cycle than silicon foundry. Uh, typically, uh, uh, you, you, we will discuss that more in detail. Uh, but from Tapot, we can deliver wafer within weeks. Um, and also, Orfab is very is very small, but he has a quite a large capacity for his size. Now we we have a, today a capacity of over one billion chips that we can manufacture per year. Um, last point I wanted to mention also is uh, with the high demand for silicon foundries. You know, the, uh, silicon foundry are now focusing on complex and high margin devices. And there's a need for an alternative uh, for simple low cost devices. Uh, you can think about uh, some company like TMMC, TSMC, you know, controlling over 60% of the world capacity. And uh, all the fab in Europe today represent no more than 10% of, uh, of, uh, of the chip uh, global chip manufacturing. So Europe wants to boost that figure to 20% and they're investing heavily in semiconductor. And we see FlexLogic as, as being a, a great opportunity of, uh, of in increasing capacity. So our mission uh, is to bring intelligence into everyday objects uh, to improve everyday life. So we like to think that we can inspire innovators to create extraordinary solutions on our technology. So by offering an easy access to chip design and manufacture, we can help innovators to accelerate their concept validation with the ability to do multiple tape out on a short period of time. So most of our customers will be able to access relatively large quantity of devices as part of our standard offering. So even for prototyping, and that gives the opportunity to run a pilot trial uh, at a very early stage. We help you to reduce the risk, the project risk due to an ASIC development on, uh, for your ASIC development, and we also uh, can reduce uh, the time to market. So with our scaling up, we, it seems perfectly reasonable to us to think that we could hit uh, a tree on high tape within 10 years, and, uh, and uh, this is what we are working on now. So coming to our manufacturing line, FlexLogic. So we have the most efficient way of manufacturing integrated sacks today. So we can deliver the same throughput as a silicon fab, but uh, on the 30 times smaller footprint. It is also, also a fully automated line. So on it run with about 40 times less people that you will have on the silicon line. It's a very fast production cycle, as I say, so you can get wafer within weeks. Um, our first production line is already up and running, and we have already demonstrated yield of up to 90% with our standard product on run rate of uh, 250 million flex IC per year. We are 
now planning our uh, second manufacturing line here in UK, but our cadet target is to have 100 FlexLogic line uh, running globally within 10 years. This is only due to the fact that our lines are compact and easy to set up. Uh, so today we can commission a line within a uh, year, that's what we are targeting to, but in, in a few years we can that, that get that down to six months and probably less. So, um, yeah, we also offer uh, to our customers the ability of installing their production line on site. So because uh, the line uh, is uh, self-contained, it doesn't require any clean room environment. So it's uh, it's certainly, um, uh, when you think about the global sh shortage, many see the possibility of having a line installed on site as being a key benefit. Uh, also, if you think about application when you require some sort of uh, late dedication, uh, late programming, therefore it's 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 a it's a great uh, chance to have uh, the opportunity to manufacture on site. Right. Yeah, FlexLogic is also the most sustainable semiconductor manufacturing. So we consume about 100 times less energy on water than an equivalent silicon fab. Uh, which result in an overall manufacturing process, which is basically uh, four, uh, three order of magnitude lower than a uh, than, uh, silicon fab. We also work towards uh, more uh, elect, elect uh, uh, sorry, we also work towards more sustainable electronic system. In RFID, for instance, we can enable the use of paper inlay or even the use of printed antennas. Most of our projects that we also work on end to passive components, so where we use RF power power to operate. Sorry, light gone off. I'm going to have to do that a couple of times during this talk, so I apologize for that. Um, yeah, so we we are strongly committed to the race to zero, and we we do quite a lot of projects in uh, around uh, designing for a better or a more energy efficient world. Uh, and uh, obviously, if you want to know more, you can always come to, to find us. Yeah, uh, talking a bit our manufacturing process. So we we have an N-type metal oxide TFT technology, which is based on IGZO. Uh, also, we have demonstrated CMOS at the R&D level. Uh, it's not yet available on our production line. To date, our manufacturing process remains uh, endmost, and, but uh, that's uh, open anyway a lot of opportunities. Um, so we have, uh, uh, so we use a 200 millimeter wafer, uh, basically by running uh, several sequences of meta material deposition, patterning, etching. And also, you may often think that we use printing technology. Often, companies think that we are printing technology. We are not. Uh, we are very actually close to conventional semiconductor manufacturing and we use industry standard tool. Today we can achieve uh, 800 nanometer channel length, but there's scope to lower that figure to a few hundred nanometer in the next uh, few years, so we are working on it. Uh, we have four rootable metal layers, 13 metal, uh, material layers, and we can offer typical device like uh, obviously N-type TFT resistor capacitors. Our plastic substrate is made out of polyimide, so basically we spin coat the polyimide on a glass uh, at the outset of our production, and the wafer is on a glass carrier which moves on a track, as you can see on the picture. Uh, it moves from tool to tool with help to mi minimize the downtime between processes. So the line is uh, classroom grade, uh, but it's self-contained, which means that it can be installed in any um, in more like relaxed environment. Uh, so that's also uh, one of our offering uh, on, let's say, on a more long term about uh, putting our flex lodging line at our customer site. Some of them are not equipped with uh, clean room uh, uh, facilities. Um, talking about our uh, Designing on our process, so we have released our PDK, so 1.0, it's named Elvelin. Uh, we now make it available to selected partners. Uh, if you're interested, you can still uh, come to talk to us. Um, we use our 
on PDK with uh, standard EDA tools such as Cadence, uh, Mentor, Synoptis. Uh, also, most of our deniers today focus on Cadence and Mentor. Talking about our wafer, so our wafer are silicon free. Uh, that's, they are made on polyamide substrate, as I said. And the overall construction of the Flex IC is around 30 micron. So it's the, the chip at the end of the day, it's about 30, 30 micron thick, which is much thinner than any silicon chip on the market. It has also some unique mechanical property, which makes the chip bendable to a radius of curvature of about five millimeter. So if you look at the top left picture, for instance, you can see a typical way we do some mechanical tests on our chips. The wafer on the frame is pressure against the disc to create a bend. Um, we also use a roll, so the roll has a five millimeter radius of curvature. It's also present on the wafer. And after such type of test, we do not observe any damage to the flex IC. Damage to the flex IC. So this has a great value when you, the chip for the chip when it has to the chip has to comply for with a curved surface such as. Uh, here on that picture, you can see some uh, medical supplies. Uh, this is some work we are doing with the label specialist Schreiner Medifarm. Um, and uh, I will actually address a talk tomorrow on this topic on the Schreiner Medifarm webinar if you're interested to know more about the RFID side of, uh, of the business. Um, I would like to to tell a bit of a story, so it's a quite an old story. Uh, 1974, I uh, well before my time, I, I, I guess uh, you assume, hopefully you assume. Um, I want to tell you a story of Chris Pedal, uh, Chuck Pedal. So Chuck Pedal was an electrical engineer for Motorola. He worked on the 1600, that was an 8-bit microprocessor that was leading the market at the time. And part of this role, um, he would assist the sales people on customer visit. Uh, and at the end, he found that customers were put off by the high cost of the chip. At the time, it was about $300 the chip. Uh, so Shack Pedal learned by listening to customers that actually the list of instructions that they require was much more smaller, smaller than what was the, what was uh, delivering the 1600. The 1600 uh, was basically an over engineer for all the customer needs. On Chuck left Motorola for MOS technology, where he developed the 6502, uh, which was basically a, uh, a simplified version of that 1600 design, but for a fraction of the cost. So in 75, the 6005 was offered at the price of about 10% of the cost of the 1600. And as a consequence, uh, well, he, he won uh, many commercial deal, you know, uh, on the chip uh, ended up to be in a, in a very known uh, computer such as the Apple II, the Commodore PT, Nintendo Entertainment System, all the great games that uh, some of us uh, grew up with. So why I'm telling you this story, uh, it's uh, because at Primatic we strongly believe that innovation is made on efficiency, not complexity. And uh, even if you could think from the beginning that uh, our, our process uh, being NMOS uh, can have some limitation, actually, when you think a bit further about what functionality you would like to address, you realize that there's large opportunity out there that can still be addressed uh, uh, on our technology. And actually, that cannot be addressed with silicon because of the cost point of silicon chip. Um, yeah, that's it. So, so we had the great pleasure to exchange with Bill Mench. So Bill Mench was one of the founder of WDC, and he also had design engineering and management position at MMOS uh, Technology in the past. So we we took the challenge of developing our own version of the 6502 on our technology, and that resulted into a 24 micron uh, millimeter. Uh, square millimeter chip, which has uh, uh, around 10,000 gates uh, and can run at 150 kilohertz. It integrates basically all the features of the MO6502, uh, so it delivers around 69 uh, instructions. 
Uh, but thanks to our fast design for to manufacture process, that 6502 was actually laid out on manufacturing in less than two weeks. So which basically gives a bit of a scale of how fast we can help with uh, ASIC uh, development. So we strongly believe that we need to reduce complexity to reduce cost. You know that it's uh, that is a good starting point. Um, and that will allow for more, uh, uh, so for better solution. One good illustration of that is our standard NFC Flex IC product. If you look at our, this table on the left, uh, you can see the feature set from a conventional NFC chip manufacturer. Uh, we have listed around rough, roughly like 16 features, which for some use cases are required to deliver uh, the expected functionality. Functionality, you know, if you want to. To have a NFC chip for mobile payment, for instance, you need some sort of level of encryption communication, for instance. Uh, however, if your intention is to add NFC tags onto smart packaging to authenticate, inform about your product, understand the customer be buying behavior, like do some sort of mar uh, market marketing campaign, only the top four are, uh, features are actually required. So all the other features are extra features that you actually won't need. So we have developed a simple uh, version of this NFC product, uh, which address a demand for a market which cannot afford the silicon solution today. So the IoT. Um, it has just enough memory to provide a global unique ID and is currently being tested on several pilot projects. Of course, you could make a simple version of that NFC chips uh, on silicon technology, but that will not be cost effective, you know, first because the NRE cost of manufacturing on silicon will be already a barrier, but also because the chip size uh, is driven by the IOS and even reducing the complexity will not actually make the chip smaller and therefore cheaper. So just to understand our main advantage over, main advantage over silicon is the fact that our cost per area is very low. So when you think about uh, uh, get density, for instance, it's not it's not such uh, an important matter on our technology. Uh, you you can actually consider designing bigger chip and actually using the the, the the size of the chip. So that's basically an, uh, the design of the chip that we've made. It's, it's used today for making RFID product. And if I want to, and that, uh, with an analogy, you know, it's a, uh, it's a bit like, uh, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, uh, to lock your shed, you know, you could, uh, you could have a different type of keys. Uh, all of them will lock your shed, you know, but one of them will probably be more appropriate because you don't want to pay a premium for a key that actually just lock your shed and doesn't lock your car. So it's, it's just a matter of understanding what functionality you require on, on design a product around it. Um, that's an example of a simple machine learning processing engine that we've done. Uh, of, of, actually, before this work, we, we already had demonstrated some proof of concept prototype with limited computational capability. Uh, so for instance, we demonstrate the 8-bit uh, arithmetic logic units, uh, which was fabricated on Flex IC, but we wanted to integrate a bit uh, a sufficient number of, of, uh, of TFTs to perform some sort of meaningful computations. So with ARM, we demonstrated that that device, which, uh, which was actually aimed to uh, order recognition uh, 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 to make some sort of sensor, a chemical sensor, and our flexible uh, processing engine contain around like uh, um, uh, in that aspect around the southern uh, southern gates. He had a, a gate density uh, which was at the time already 20 to 45 times higher than what you will uh, you will have uh, on the other type of metal oxide uh, uh, devices uh, at the time it was developed uh, uh, not so long ago. So. When we couple this machine learning processing engine with uh, with this Inno sensor, so we it was actually with a flexible substrate with some uh, uh, we, with some uh, uh, sensor array, uh, then we were able to detect some specific order, and that could be used uh, for very uh, simple application. For instance, if you attach this type of sensor on a meat package, uh, you can actually monitor the food quality and safety 
And that's also very low cost. Therefore, you can really populate it easily and you can read them by distance. It's, uh, it's, 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 I mean, the all, the, the all use cases come together very quickly. Um, more recently, we, we have uh, done some work on a programmable processor, which is, uh, which obviously is more generic than the machine learning uh, uh, hardware. And this one supports a rich set of instructions that can be used to program a wide variety of applications from control codes to data intensive application like a machine learning algorithm. So we had three components in this natively flexible microprocessor, a 32-bit CPU, a 32-bit processor, which also contains a CPU on peripherals, uh, and the system or chip that contains the processor, memory, and bus interfaces. It is basically derived from, derived from an ARM Cortex M0 processor, uh, which uh, supports a rich set of uh, uh, more over 80 uh, instructions. Um, so the overall device is quite large. It's 59 square millimeter without the pads, but it contains uh, 50, more than 50,000 devices uh, uh, or 18,000 uh, NAND gate uh, equivalents. So it's probably the most complex flexible integrated circuit built on metal oxide TFT so far. So we have demonstrated our ability to deliver uh, uh, devices that have increased complexity. Uh, obviously, we started with uh, NFC with 300 gates uh, to a full microprocessor. Uh, down the line, which had uh, 18,000 uh, uh, non-gate equivalents. And that basically development type to us was uh, less uh, less than two years time. So I think uh, you, that kind of gives us a scale of where you, we can go in the next few years, you know. Um, we have demonstrated large device. Obviously, this one was uh, the largest was 59 square millimeter which was a great technical achievement, but probably when we think of the, about the best value proposition for us today, it is not necessarily here. So you have to, you have to think about uh, where we can go uh, uh, further. So I think further we will be able to eat something on 100,000 gate very easily and make larger devices as well, larger size memory. Uh, but uh, uh, for now, uh, in terms of product design, uh, it's our sweet spot remain, um, uh, what I will say, a complexity between one to 10,000, uh, uh, 1,000 to 10,000 gates uh, for product development. So again, uh, just to wake you up, uh, we have a clear technology roadmap to increase the uh, device complexity and obviously with uh, CMOS uh, uh, down the line as well, uh, that, that will improve. But uh, we, we really have a, a, a great opportunity for making simple low-cost devices today. And that's, uh, I would say, uh, where uh, we would like to hear more uh, about your ideas. Um, we have developed a, a strong partnership with a leading pick and place machine manufacturer, Mobauer, uh, to qualify an assembly process on the TAL 15,000. It's a pick and place machine, which is industry benchmark for uh, fleet ship RFID inlays. Uh, there's more than 300 machines installed globally. Uh, the machine can deliver a throughput of around 13,000 inlay per hour today, which is very well suited when you want to make low cost, high volume manufacturing. We also work with Mobauer on a direct DAC attach process, which should also increase the throughput for inlay manufacturing partner. So having the ability to, to make low cost larger chip has several advantages down the line. So I want to take that as an example. So for RFID, uh, if you if you think about the, the chip size, it actually helps reducing the cost of the attach due to the fact that you relax the alignment tolerances and the fact that you can go high speed uh, flex IC transfer process. And because the chips are plastic, there is no need for block top pr protection, you know, uh, it also helps to reduce the cost of the antenna. Um, 
uh, or that you know the fact that you can make uh, 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 you don't need for patterning accuracy on the antenna it's also uh, a win when you almost manufacture the antenna itself uh, so that great advantage advantages you know that uh, that you can see here one of them is obviously the fact that you can make single sided inlays so if you look at the photo on the right bottom right which is a, a standard conventional silicon inlay um, you can see uh, you can see a tiny chip because obviously you want to make the chip tiny to reduce the cost but as you have to bridge the antenna you are actually a bridge which is on the other side of the inlay, so it's a two steps assembly process. Um, if you look at uh, the photo on the right, the yellow one, which is our flex IC on a, on a RFID tag, you can see that uh, uh, obviously the flex IC provides a, uh, an NFC type functionality, but at top of it, because we can make the chip larger, uh, the chip can be used to bridge the antenna and on, uh, on that means that when you have to assemble the chip to the to, to the antenna, it's a single step. That allows to increase throughput and obviously reduce material cost. Um, it's often with our customer that we see that when you start thinking at the system level that we can observe how the Flex IC also can enable more clever de design, cost reduction, uh, it's uh, it's all about thinking at the system level. So we want to allow better electronic design, but we always aim to design solutions that makes the world a, a better place. So we are very active uh, first in healthcare. Uh, with, uh, we have the armpit project, for instance, where we have designed this machine learning processing uh, uh, engine uh, that could be used for early detection of disease you know by detecting voc uh, with uh, sensor devices you can prevent sepsis diabetes asthma cancer among others with rfid on sensor tags on food you can improve the food chain uh, so the RFID can be used for cold chain authentication and bring a customer, a better customer awareness uh, on the, the provenance of the product that they eat. So sensor itself also can help to validate the food condition as we just discussed before, such as for meat packaging. We also are very active uh, in the circular economy. So with the use of RFID tags on recyclable bottles, uh, we can give a unique ID to consumables. The consumer can be rewarded for uh, disposing from an item properly. Obviously, there are many consumer projects which we cannot disclose publicly, but I would say that also RFID remains a large part of our business today. There is a growing demand for adding all types of sensors to consumables. Um, and um, as I say, so we really want to hear new ideas, so please come forward if you have content that you would like to validate with us. Um, our foundry services, so we expect our customers to have expertise in IC design. So uh, if you if you think about uh, uh, the process, you know, to work with us, to work with us, we will first offer a PDK access, which includes devices, model, design rules, manual, uh, and also a growing cell library, obviously. So our customer will have some access and expertise with EDA tools such as Cadence, Mentor, or Synoptis. Uh, obviously, we'll do our best to, to get you started not on the tool, but how, on the use of our PDK. And when, that, uh, when you go through the product specification phase, you know, uh, following an interactive design to manufacture phase, uh, we can offer multiple tape out to optimize your FlexAC product. If you, don't, if you do not have any IC design expertise, uh, but uh, you are looking after a functionality, this is also okay. Uh, we all can also provide some IC design on system uh, level design support. Uh, we have a large team to, uh, to help you out.
I think when we think about uh, the main interest from our customer, uh, maybe uh, 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 you, I'm repeating myself, but we really have the fastest production cycle times. If you want to break it down, um, by the time we complete, if you if you come to us and you complete the design, by the time uh, uh, you complete the design, we will take probably a few days for data prep before tap out, obviously. But the reticles are te typically delivered to us within a week, uh, and we can start production within two weeks from tap out. Of course, the production time depends on volume requirement, you know. But for prototyping, let's say like small volume you can expect to receive the wafer within four weeks after tape out. Our customer will typically consider three to four tape outs within 12 months. That's pretty common for us. And they often take use of the full reticle to run several projects at once. This has been a key differentiating factor, you know, for us uh, compared to conventional silicon foundry. And uh, it certainly change the way uh, the IC designer we work with today think about taping out their design. Let's say we are all about low cost simple device, you know, and uh, we can say the sky is the limit when it comes to design possibilities. So uh, on, uh, I won't be here to give you advice on what to design in our technology. However, if you want to have some sort of understanding, um, uh, where we have seen traction so far for our technology. I would say, uh, obviously, it's about low-cost, simple devices. So, um, but we've made simple sensor, uh, simple microprocessor, driver for simple display, like segmented displays, micro arrays, on other type of application. If you, you can also think of developing hybrid uh, system, you know, by bringing some level of uh, customization. Uh, for like, you know, you can use off the shelf silicon chips and use our Flex IC to add some uh, some sort of functionality. Uh, I mean, you can also think of maybe like interposer, for instance, of our technology on our technology. We think that everything should be made uh, as simple as possible, you know, but not necessarily simpler. Um, this means that we can help you to develop architectures that are more simple, but deliver the same type of functionality. For more IC designers, you know, it is, it is counterintuitive to work on our technology where footprint is not so critical and where larger chip can even be a, a cost effective, uh, cost an advantage, it can even be cost effective at the, at the system level. We have to kind of have to work out to get your thinking clean uh, to make it simple, but that's a process I, I ensure you it's worth going through. Remember that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication and if you believe in simplicity, don't take it from me, take it from the great creator who value also simplicity. So we have a right uh, wide uh, variety of uh, offerings, obviously, from uh, a prototyping to volume welfare production. Uh, we can have foundry services. We can have design support as well. Uh, we also do some sort of system level uh, development with our business development team. So it's quite wide in terms of what we can do, I would say today. Most of our customers will have uh, some sort of dedicated tape out, you know, reason being that they want to have access to a large quantity at an early stage, as I say. Um, so for testing, but also to run some pilot. So that's probably a key differentiator from the uh, uh, silicon offering today, you know, or, or you go to high volume uh, with INRE or you have very uh, small quantity. We are kind of between, you know, we can provide in, uh, we have a very affordable way of making a large quantity of chip. A prototype project will have uh, typically one tape out, but uh, you will get the full reticles and you will have uh, five wafers delivered uh, in the agreed format. So we encourage you to get in touch with uh, myself or with Romano. So if you would like to know more about uh, obviously our commercial offering. So, those are all good reasons to talk to us. You know, if you 
if your company, uh, oh, that will be my, uh, my uh, conclusion for today. If your company needs for low cost ASIC solutions, so now we, we offer a fastest production cycle uh, and also the low, uh, lowest cost for dedicated tape out, both for NRE but also for production. If you're a design house or consultancy want to add pragmatic to its portfolio, we have PDK available for you to design with. Uh, it is a new technology, so let's say there's clearly a fair opportunity to develop new IPs on it. And I will say, if you're a university and if you would like to use pragmatic technology for research or even educational purpose, we offer free access to our PDK and we also have some discounted tape out fee. So I invite you to discuss that uh, with uh, myself or with Romano. Obviously, we want to push that activity towards your practice today. And uh, I will uh, obviously let uh, Romano uh, uh, conclude on this. Um, on that note, I thank you all for attending uh, this uh, webinar on low-cost, flexible, integrated circuit. I hope you know more about Pragmatic today, and uh, I will be looking forward to hear about uh, any creative design that you will uh, want to get through, you know. Thank you very much, and at that stage, I will hand over to Romano.